Here's our next example of how to use quantitative mass analysis to come up with either what the unknown is or what the molar concentration is or something like that. In this case, we have an example where we're trying to determine the molar concentration of a solution that contains copper ions and sulfate ions. So we put copper sulfate into a solution, it dissociated, and now we have it as an ionic solution. We want to know the molar concentration of the copper ion and if we add an excess of sodium sulfide, we're going to precipitate out copper sulfide. And when precipitate out copper sulfide, we should be able to determine how much copper we had in the solution initially. So the strategy is to first find out the mass of copper in the precipitate, because we know how much total precipitate came out of the solution. We then figure out what percentage of that is copper, then we figure out the Mo the number of moles of copper and once we have the number of moles we can find the concentration or the molarity because that's the number of moles per unit volume. Alright, so first we want to find out the mass of copper. That's step one. The mass of copper in the precipitate. Alright, so we know that we have the total precipitate here so we're going to multiply the total mass of precipitate times the ratio of how much copper we have in that precipitate compared to the whole mass of that, of that um, compound, copper sulfide. So the mass of copper is equal to the mass of the sample, which is 0.0177 grams, times the ratio of the mass of copper divided by the mass of the compound, which is copper sulfide. All right, that will be the amount of copper as a ratio of the whole thing times in the mass of the whole thing, right there. So this is going to be equal to 0.0177 grams times the mass of copper. We take the molar mass of 63.55 grams divided by the total mass. So we have to add these up together. So this would be 62, and that would be 95. So 95.62 grams. Oop. I forgot the grams there. There we go. So that would be the mass of the copper sulfide. So now we need a calculator. So I have 0 0.0177 times 63.55 divided by 95.62 equals 0 0.01176 grams of copper. Okay, so now we know how much copper we had in our precipitate. Now we're going to figure out the number of moles of copper. So second step is the number of moles of copper. So how do we do that? So we take the mass of copper and divide it by the mass per mole. There we go. So this is equal to the mass of copper divided by the mass, oop, the mass of copper divided by moles, which is the mass per mole. There we go, mass per mole of copper. All right, if we do that, we'll get the number of moles. So we have 0 0.01176 grams of copper divided by the mass of copper per mole, which is 63.55 grams of copper per mole. Notice that the grams of copper will cancel out, and since we have 1 over moles in the denominator, we get the number of moles. So we divide that by 63.55 equals, and so this is equal to 0 0.0001851 moles. All right, so now we have the number of moles of copper which is of course the number of moles of copper ions in the solution, assuming we precipitated all of the copper out of the solution. So now for step three, we want the molarity or the concentration. The molarity is equal to the number of moles divided by the number of liters. Okay, so we have 0 0.000188. One eight. I said eight and I wrote five. That happens too often. One eight uh, five one moles. And then how much of the solution do we have? 800 milliliters, which is 0 0.8 liters. So we divide that by 0 0.8. And that ends up with 0 0.0002314 
moles per liter. And there is the concentration of the copper ions in our solution. And that's how you do that.